the balance sheet as well as P&L statement together describe the entire company. Describe the transaction, entire set of transactions. Why? <coughs> P&L statement is talking of whatever the transactions that have happened during the year. It is recording all the transactions that have happened during the year. Balance sheet is telling me what is left at the end of the year. What is left to be received or to be paid at the end of the year. There is nothing else in a business. When I say what has happened during the year and what is outstanding. This two put together is the total business itself. So when we say primary statements, even those two are sufficient for me. And when it comes to cash flow, it's an additional statement which is derived from these two statements itself so that a more clarity comes in terms of reality. Right? The intention is to bring in more and more a realistic picture or because the P&L statement actually goes with some accounting norms and accounting standards. Whereas, if uh, but, uh, but uh, on the other side, the accounting norms may or may not be equal to reality picture. The real cash that is available in my uh, in my accounts. Right. So from that standpoint, what we are saying is even the cash flow statement, probably if it can reflect a different dimension of the balance sheets and the PL statements itself. Where we talk about in reality, cash wise, am I good enough or am I having some kind of shortage? Because to buy or sell anything, cash is the most important aspect. Right? Probably you may not say, uh, I'm having a profit of, look at my PL statement, I'm having a profit of uh, uh, 200 million. So looking at it, you give me some raw material. No one will. Give me the raw material. Probably I should have cash to purchase that raw material. Even if I take it on a credit basis or cash, at the end, the medium of transaction is cash. So, it may so happen that my that my profit is showing 200 million, but my cash may be zero also. No manipulations. I am talking about realities itself because let's say you have purchased a big machinery worth 2000 million this year by paying cash anyhow you are not showing 2000 million as a part of your expense you will depreciate it so which means as a part of the expense in this year probably assuming 10 years life you are showing only 200 million as a part of the expense right only 200 million is shown as a part of the expense and because of that let's say your profitability is 200 million. But if you had shown the whole 2000 million as an expense, your profitability would have been negative altogether. Right? But you may not have cash right now with you because 2000 million has been paid to the supplier or to the vendor to purchase it. But in the PNL, you are showing only 200 million right now. Because of that, what could happen is. The reality picture could be much different from accounting picture. And to give loans or any other activities, people expect the realities to be much closer to what your statements are actually displaying. And that is what a PNL statement or a cash flow statement trying to address. In reality, in fixed cash terms, how much is there, how much has gone in and how much has gone out, right? Okay, so from a cash flow standpoint, we are looking at three major statements which any company will prepare. Of course, it's a one single cash flow statement, but components wise, we look at three major activities, cash flow from operation, the, we have also discussed that three core activities of any business are operations, investments and financing. And for any non-finance company, 
operations is the key right because that's a core day to day work for them whereas okay investment is more to do with if they have some excess cash probably they can put it somewhere whereas when it comes to financing if they want some loans or some fresh capital they'll get into a financing but those two are very rare kind of activities they don't happen on a day to day basis whereas operations happen on a day to day basis so the way we look at these three is cash flow from operations talk about the real cash movements that are happening in terms of the day to day operations of the business not the accounting accounting movements right which means i will i will really take it as a cash or revenue only when i get the cash for it not or not the accrual kind of a basis right in reality only i will look at them any operation the real movement of the cash received or payment of the cash is what is typically looked at so the typical way we can work out is using the pnl statement and using all elements of pnl and using all elements of balance sheet we can actually prepare a cash flow statement using all elements of pnl and all elements of balance sheet we'll prepare a cash flow statement what we'll do is uh, i'll i'll take one example wherein i'll have a balance sheet with me i'll have a pnl statement with me using that we'll try to make a cash flow statement using a balance sheet and a pnl statement okay now coming to the cash flow from investment activities whatever are the cash that is my majorly associated with investments what are those investments non tangible or non current assets anything that is going as a part of non current assets in the balance sheet which could be tangible assets intangible assets or uh, uh, investments all these are going as being treated as whatever you are buying or selling those kind of stuff they are all treated as cash flow from investment activities and anything to do with your non current liabilities part which is loans right anything associated uh, with the loans or new issuance of the equity or buying back the shares which are they are getting treated as a part of cash flow from financing activity so simply put right a couple of uh, quick measurements for you or let's say i am talking about cash flow from operations we will take current assets and current liabilities from the balance sheet so we have to link all elements of balance sheet and all elements of pnl that is what i am saying to make the cash flow statement the way we break it out is for cash flow from operations we take all current assets and current liabilities from the balance sheet to prepare our cash flow from investments we take all non current assets and to make cash flow from financing we take all non current liabilities plus owners whole balance sheet is over the whole of balance sheet is over to prepare this cash flow statement getting it non current liabilities long term loans and all those going as non current liabilities and owner equity share capitals those kind of stuff are coming into cash flow from financing activity this is a straight forward quick way of preparing your cash flow statement and anything that are more linked with all these things let's say we are talking about uh, we are talking about non current assets investments kind of stuff or tangible assets so what are the corresponding elements for them in the pnl other income it is like a dividend income because i have invested somewhere they are giving me some income right if i am investing somewhere i'll get either interest i'll get some dividend they are more going as a part of the other income so whichever are the benefits that are coming because of non current assets in the pnl statement even those we take it into 
the cash flow from investment activities itself. The same way here, whatever are the things which are corresponding to non-current liabilities, probably dividends, when you have raised the equity capital, you have to pay a dividend. And uh, probably interest payment also, but as per gap, you don't need to bother about it. Interest payment actually comes here only as per gap. The other day we have seen the interest payment comes as a part of gap, uh, as a part of cash flow from operations itself. Only the dividend payment goes as a part of cash flow from financing. So these are the three things. So the whole PNL, whole balance sheet is prepared, is taken into consideration to prepare your cash flow statement. Right? And some of the things which are there in the PNL, they are non cash kind of investing and financing activities. There may be some kind of non-cash kind of investing and financing activities which must be present as a part of your PNL statement. Investing, that the year in which you have bought only the money has got moved. The real cash moved only in the year of your purchase. But you are allocating the cost over few years saying it is depreciation. But there is no cash movement during the years of depreciation. So in your PNL it may be there, but in your cash flow this should not be considered at all. Am I right? In your PNL you can keep it, but in your cash flow you should not consider it. Those are all called as non-cash investment and financing activities. They do not have any entry in the cash flow statement. Right? When you are making a cash flow statement, and otherwise, you see here, buying an asset through a credit from the seller. This is also an investment activity. I'm buying an asset. Right? It's, it's an investment activity. Buying a big machine. Buying a big machine through credit from seller, not from the bank. The seller himself has given me a credit. So, there is no cash that has been used right now. So, cash flow statement should not reflect that at all. Wherever cash was not used, cash flow statement should not reflect that amount at all. So, simple, some of the things you may have to remember with respect to US GAAP and IFRS. Regarding the interest and the dividends, there are some differences on where each of these will go. Dividend received. If we see dividend received, in gap it has to go into, sorry, yeah, in gap except for dividend paid, all the others go into cash flow from operations itself. Dividend received, interest received, interest paid and even the taxes paid. All of them are treated as cash flow from operations itself as a part of the US cap. Whereas the cash flow from financing talks about the dividend paid. For the financing activity, whatever the dividend you are paying to your shareholders, that is treated as cash outflow from financing activity. But with the IFRS, what they have done is any payment, any payment you are treating either as cash flow from financing or operation. Whatever the one you are using, you have to mention it in the footnote. You can either represent them in CFF or CFO, but that has to be mentioned in the footnotes. Whereas anything to do with uh, receipts, dividend received, interest received, whatever you are receiving, you have to you can mention them as cash flow from investment because you because you have invested you are receiving something so it could be shown as a part of cash flow from investment or operation so anything can be shown under operation but receipts are shown under investments payments can be shown